looks like we've got a, ourselves a good old-fashioned normal with switching allowed. I do like the normal matches. They are, I think, the most fun. I think I, I, I like the matches where you can just sort of sit back and actually like I, the, the stuff like Defiance and Metronome. Although I do like piloting matches, those like those are fun. I've only done it occasionally though. But um, I like the matches where you can kind of let the Pokemon do their thing, and you just sort of. You have to put your money where you think the better contender is, kind of. I'm... Yo, I just had a cool idea. Now, I know this will never happen, but what if they allowed the two commentators to actually like play against each other on opposing teams? That would be uh, interesting, but yeah, I, I, it sounds, sounds unlikely. <laughs> It was just a random thought. It would have been kind of cool. Like, if you, like, I picked red and you picked blue here, and then we'd both be, you know, playing it in real time and see what happens. The cursing. The cursing would be a thing. <laughs> you would have to, you would not be able to censor yourself? Well, I just think if that became, for, you know, commentators in general, it wouldn't be long uh, before <laughs> someone made a mistake. We'd hear certain four-letter words or something. Indeed. And we're getting close to that time where there will be no more bets taken. If you want to get your bets in, it looks like the, uh, the, the best odds are on blue. So red is likely to win, according to the uh, bettors. The money has spoken. I'm not sure. I mean, I see what you're saying, Juan. I think, I mean, he's talking about, you know, actually putting money out there and selecting and all that. But yeah, no, I mean, no one can stop us from picking sides. We can buy, be biased if you want. I, I've never said that I was unbiased, I think. I mean, I switch between being biased and unbiased, depending on what the situation. Whatever the situation calls for. So, Golduck will be intimidated, but unless they go for Skullbash, that will not matter. Yes, even if they stole uh, the moves uh, Masquerade with me first, they still would not be affected by that Intimidate. And there's a critical hit, and it takes Golduck down to about a third health. Golduck can still hear ringing in its ears. And it answers back with a revenge crit. Trying to give that Masquerade a bubble bath. And another Whoa, critical and hit! Oh is my is not gosh. to be one of. <laughs> and there you have it, two critical hits will knock out Golduck, and Red Blue will have to switch in a new Pokémon. It is a crit party. We'll all be going in for the uh, stab bug bite, but unfortunately, it's not very effective and not quite enough to seal the deal. Full beat takes a bug buzz and puts it just around half health. Thankfully, it wasn't a crit, so Masquerade hasn't instantly won another battle. Well, I guess even with a crit, Volby would have tanked. So Volby kicks with its butt and docks out. The Vespaquin. That's not Vespaquin, Masquerin. Classic ball beat strats, use it, using its derriere. Not liking the chances of this bug against the uh, unicorn. Decent damage on that kick, though. Burned Andy. in a chariot of fire and Volbeat goes down. Chariot of fire, nice. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> so 
so with Shelgon now out for the blue corner, it looks to make up lost ground. And it looks like uh, Red is going for the flinch hacks. Nice speedy horse taking advantage of that. Shelgon has really nice defense though and tank tanks it pretty well. It looked like they might try a scary face, but it's just going for the damage. However, Rapidash will hold on and it will get another chance to attack. And it looks like they're trying for the burn and getting some stab damage. But it does not. It hit phase. for about the same as Headbutt, and uh, there is no flinch chance with that flame wheel. So, <laughs> so with and another attack from Shell Gun, it takes down Rapidash, but gets a burn from its flame body. Well, between the uh, flame wheel and that flame body that I did not notice, the chances for burn there were pretty good. Yeah, I did not notice the flame body either. So it will have super effective damage with that Zen headbutt, but the burn is going to reduce its effectiveness quite a bit. So the Yachberry will reduce the effectiveness of this Ice Beam. Shelgon does hold on, but unless they can get some flinches from Zen Headbutt, it looks like this one's all over. And Blue Corner really hopes they don't miss. And they don't. Oh, there's Hitting a critical through that hit. Burn. Does a critical hit ignore the damage loss from Burn? Indeed. However, that's not enough. Ice Beam will hit into Shelgon and he goes down. Red Team is the winner. Good fight put up by both teams. Actually a very even match throughout. The Red Team will enjoy a nice payout there of 153%. And it looks like we have the uh, Meowth stage again. So the other... their... Is this a new one? Is this a new instance? I would believe so. I think they went back to the red table and now we're on blue again. Okay. Unless you fail one of the bonus stages, you usually don't go to it again unless you complete the second stage and then the Mewtwo stage as well. Have you ever been lucky enough to get to a Mewtwo stage when you bid it on Pinball? I have... I, I rarely bid on pinball, so, so no. <laughs> so on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you need to play more pinball, and 10 you need to call an addiction hotline, how would you rate your pinball playing levels? Oh, like, just the standard game pinball, not necessarily this pinball? No, I mean the pinball here on the stream. Oh, uh, definitely, like, I would, I if, if I need to play pinball at all, I need to play more pinball. So you're saying like a 1.2 or something like that? 1.2, that's, I mean, yeah, if not, if not, just a flat out 1. 1.2 1 out of 10, more pinball. More pinball required, and we have a weight token going...